Today on Comic Storian, with the revival of Hal Jordan as the Green Lantern, what else was revived when he came back from the dead? This is the Comic Storian channel where I take some of your favorite trade paperbacks and single issues. I break them down into digestible bites to allow you to understand what is going on. I then read them dramatically back to you. We cut out a lot of the fluff, the B plots, and stuff like that. And what this does is allows you to know what's happening in the comic book, but still have something to collect for your collection. All alterations to the panel sex and images are to prevent copyright problems and all art is owned by its respective companies. Today we're going to be looking at the Green Lantern graphic novel known as No Fear. This is technically part two of the Jeff Johns saga, and we're going to bring you the first story that is within this volume. This is the return of another being that was revived when Hal Jordan was revived in our last video. If you missed the last video, Hal Jordan has just returned from the dead and gotten his Green Lantern ring back. And if you want early access to these videos, make sure you join us over at Patreon at patreon.com slash comicstorian. All right, let's get into this video. Green Lantern, no fear, first of two stories. Hal Jordan and his partner are flying their raptor jets throughout the canyon, playing a game of cards with each other. And as that experience comes to its end, we see that Hal Jordan is finally back into the Air Force. But as he heads into the locker room, he grabs his ring and he checks in with John Stewart. Hey, I've got a zero zero, John tells him, indicating an abandoned spacecraft in orbit. Hal nods his head, glowing green for a moment before transforming into the green lantern leaping into the sky. But as he is leaving, over in Barstow, California, an Air Force airman is walking out a convenience store with a few coffees and lunch in hand. He heads back to his partner at their transport truck where he finds the man slowly peeking underneath the tarp of whatever they're hauling. He's quickly told to not worry about that. It's classified. Meaning that if his partner looks again, he's going to shoot. The darkness beneath that tarp, it's moaning. Meanwhile, Hal Jordan is meeting with John in orbit, and the former Marine points out that he's shocked that Hal went back to the Air Force. Isn't belonging to one organization enough? John asks as they fly through space, but Hal points out that the Corps only has five officers, and they still aren't sure the Guardians are going to restart it. In the distance, they see a large yellow ship floating gently. There was a time when yellow was their weakness, but now they know the impurity is a part of the Demon Parallax. They know that they can overcome their fear and fight through it. So the two use their rings to cut a hole into the ship's hull, floating inside. Their rings aren't picking up any life support systems, navigational systems. It's not picking up anything, and especially not anything that is organic. On top of that, the fuel cells are empty. But back in Barstow, California, something has landed in a large, fiery crater on the highway. A strange being, bald, dressed in a blue spacesuit. He steps out, finding a man arguing with his girlfriend behind the gas station. The man sees the strange alien picking up a pipe and tries to pick a fight. The strange being holds up his hand, and the man's body explodes. Threat terminated, the being says in a robotic voice, and the young woman falls to the ground, her eyes in tears as she looks at the mess of what remains of her boyfriend. Primary directive, locate predecessor. Secondary directive, terminate all life. The alien says, his glowing hand raising to the women. Back with Hal and John, though, they have no trail or idea as to what to follow. So, Hal returns to his apartment in Coast City. He thinks to himself about how the government is trying to entice people to return to Coast City as he passes all of the construction, but the city itself is still relatively empty. As he goes to his door, someone calls out, I don't believe it. I thought you were dead. Hal is shocked, turning to see his younger brother Jim walking towards him with a big smile. The two begin to catch up with Hal asking if Jim intends to move back to Coast City, but Jim shakes his head, telling him that he doesn't believe he should. Too many bad things happen here. They begin to argue about that, but they're interrupted as a loud boom sounds overhead and the windows begin to shatter. Hal looks up to see a jet barreling over the city, its engines on fire as it begins to crash, and he reaches out, willing his power battery to appear before him. You might want to cover your eyes. Hal tells his brother, as the apartment is filled with green light, he begins to fly after the jet in seconds, reaching out with his willpower to snag it out of the air. He quickly brings it outside of the city, setting it down near some firefighters. The canopy cracks open and Hal's mouth drops open as the pilot gets out, removing her helmet, letting her long blonde hair fall to her shoulders. Yellow, my one weakness, he thinks with a smile. The woman thanks him for the save and introduces herself as Captain Jillian Perlman. 
They have a brief moment as the firefighters move in towards the jet to put it out, but everyone turns as the smoke clears to reveal the strange engine within the plane. That's not from Earth, Hal thinks as he sees it. Meanwhile, outside of the city, the Air Force truck passes a sign for Edwards Air Force Base, the tarp blowing in the breeze, revealing a glowing cybernetic eye. No man escapes us, the robotic eye stammers. Later, a bus passes the same sign and the driver stops as he sees the other strange bald alien. He hits the bricks, screeching to a halt. Do you need a lift or something? He shouts out of the window, but the alien turns, lifting his glowing hand. No, he says simply, with the bus and all of its passengers destroyed. The alien doesn't react to that, simply turning away and continuing to walk down the highway. Back over with the strange aircraft, Hal is explaining to Captain Perlman that her engine isn't from Earth. You have a UFO under your hood, he tells her, kneeling down to examine the engine. He allows his ring to scan it, and the ring tells him that the engine was built on Earth, but is of alien design. I think part of this was reverse engineered. Hal tells Perlman, who is still standing close to him. They both turn, though, as a jeep pulls up and outsteps General Stone, the officer that Hal punched long ago. The general holds out his hand to greet the Green Lantern, and Hal looks at him for a moment, remembering what happened between them, but he finally reaches out, shaking the general's hand. Captain Perlman and Hal begin to question what she was flying, but the general simply tells them both it's classified. Hal doesn't argue, telling the general that he understands and he flies off. And when John wants to tell him about the destruction on the highway, he tells him that he's got a few things to handle back where he's at right now. He heads back to his apartment where he finds his brother still waiting for him, and they quickly return to their conversation about the city and their past, Jim telling his brother to give up his life in the Air Force and just be a Green Lantern. You and I are the only Jordans left, Jim tells him as he looks out at the ghost town that Ghost City has become. I won't live in fear, Jim. I can't. Hal tells him softly. Hal eventually returns to Edwards Air Force Base, where he goes to see his friend, and they discuss if he should apologize to the general for punching him so long ago. But as Shane informs him that he should apologize, the truck from before begins to pull ahead. It heads over to Hangar 44, where the general's top secret project is going on and the ring on Hal's finger begins to glow, warning him. Extraterrestrial sentience within 100 meters, analyzing threat. Hal leaps into the air as that truck suddenly explodes, and he flies overhead, looking down at the humanoid shape struggling out of the rubble. No man escapes. The Manhunter stammers as the Air Force guards open fire upon it. Hal reaches for his ring, grabbing a piece of the truck's engine, slamming it into the android, and he begins to wail on it again and again, creating a jet construct, crashing that into the monster. But the Manhunter leaps into the air, kicking him hard, sending Hal Jordan flying backwards, crashing through the walls of Hangar 44. Hal struggles to his feet, but turns and is shocked to see the spacecraft that sits in the bay. That's Abin Sur's ship, reconstructed and rebuilt. Hal gasps as he realizes that the alien that gave him his ring the ship was captured by the Air Force. But at that moment, the Manhunter's wires suddenly wrap around his throat, yanking him back. No man escapes the Manhunters! The android robotically tells him with a laser blast slicing through the air, freeing Jordan. He looks up as the strange alien approaches, believing him to be a new hero that appeared while he was gone. But his ring tries to warn him that that is not a new hero that appeared while he's gone. And with that, the alien holds up his hand, hitting Hal Jordan with another blast that knocks him across the hangar. But then the alien also waves his hand, slamming the Manhunter against the wall. Manhunter 1988.2814, you are of original design, flawed, old, obsolete. By the order of the Grand Master, you must be terminated, the alien tells the android. But Hal is back ready to fight, creating a jet engine that washes the alien in hot energy. Its uniform begins to burn, tearing it away, but the alien just holds out his hand, using his power to slam Hal into the ground. His skin and uniform then begin to slop off, revealing its true nature. Green Lantern Space Sector 2814 belongs to us. It belongs to the Manhunters. The model of a Manhunter warns Hal, his hand still glowing. And nothing escapes the Manhunters. But before he can do anything to Hal, he turns back to the old model of the Manhunter, ordering it to self-destruct. Do you comply? It asks, and the Manhunter's weapon appears in its hand. Hal struggles up, creating needle constructs that cut through the two robots, but the new Manhunter turns towards him. The authority of the Green Lanterns is not recognized by the Grand Master. You are obsolete, the Manhunter tells him. Hal tries to hit him with a buzzsaw, but the android flies into him, slamming him into a jet outside. 
Willpower Nexus located in right hand. Remove hand. The Manhunter says, pinning Hal to the jet, grabbing his hand, but it can't reach through his force shield and activates power retrieval. Hal's eyes widen as he watches the Manhunter's head open up, revealing a power battery within it. It quickly begins to siphon the power out of his ring, weakening his shield, allowing it to damage his arm. Hal screams in pain, but the Manhunter looks up as the older model flies past them, and it releases Hal, returning to his primary objective, Terminate Predecessor. The Air Force personnel rush forward, asking if the struggling Green Lantern is okay. Hal nods as he gets to his feet, but a quick check of his ring tells him that he has 1.2% of his power remaining. Not enough to fly, or call John, or take on two Manhunters. He looks up at the collection of jets nearby. I need a ride, he thinks to himself, and he turns as General Stone pulls up in his Jeep. A Manhunter's self-destruction is like a nuke going off. I have to stop them, General. I need to borrow one of your jets. The general thanks him for his assist, but tells him that this is classified. Anger wells up in Hal as he whirls around, punching the general across the face. We don't have time for red tape! The guards all raise their weapons to our Green Lantern, but the general waves them off, finally agreeing to allow Hal to take one of the jets. You sure you know how to fly a raptor? The general asks him, and Hal pulls himself into the cockpit. I'll bring her back without a scratch. He promises starting up the jet engine and flying into the air. He takes off after the Manhunters, and the General gets on the radio explaining that they found the Manhunter's remains in a Louisiana bayou after it attacked the planet some time ago. They used it to create the X-2020 engine. It was being returned to Edwards Air Force Base to be destroyed when it activated. Hal nods, realizing that the Manhunter only activated when he returned from the dead, when Parallax was revealed. He closes in on the two androids, opening fire with the Raptor's missile system. But the new model turns on him, flying forward, slamming into the canopy, shattering it. I guess that qualifies as a scratch. Hal thinks to himself, and the Manhunter grabs him by his wounded right hand, lifting him up, sending waves of pain throughout Hal's body, his ring dying at that exact moment. This now leaves Hal Jordan without his powers, and the Raptor dies just as quickly, beginning to plummet out of the air. Hal manages to glide the craft, aiming it towards the water below, away from the city. But the new model Manhunter has returned to its prey, sending its weapon through the old Manhunter's head, activating its self-destruct sequence. The new Manhunter then returns to the falling jet that contains Hal, preparing to open fire. But Hal Jordan leaps out, falling towards the Manhunter. In the brightest day, and the blackest night! He begins to say, and he manages to grab a hold of the android, its head still open to reveal the power battery. No evil shall escape my sight! Let those who worship evil's might beware my power! Green Lantern's light! Hal shouts as he slams his ring into the Manhunter's head. It powers him to 100%, allowing him to rip the Manhunter's head clean off. He moves quickly, grabbing the falling plane out of the sky and putting it down gently. He then flies over to the old Manhunter, ordering his ring to shut down the self-destruct. Unable to unlock Manhunter's binary code in less than 6.7 hours, the ring informs him, and Hal nods, grabbing the Manhunter with his willpower. Come on, Rusty, we're going for a ride. He says as they leap into the air. They fly quickly into deep space, away from where the bomb can hurt the Earth. What is that? The Manhunter suddenly asks, bringing a look of shock from Hal. My programming is failing to hypothesize what happens after self-destructing. What happens next? I feel fear. The Manhunter says softly as the bomb explodes, knocking Hal backwards even with his force field. And in the darkness of space, only small pieces of the Manhunter remain. Hal returns to Earth, quickly returning to Edwards Air Force Base, where he finds himself in the General's office, quickly apologizing for what happened years ago. It was my mistake and I regret it and I want to apologize, sir. General looks at him for a moment before holding out his hand. It's all I needed to hear. We all make mistakes. If you want back into the Air Force, you're in. Besides, it'd be a great honor to have a Green Lantern in the Air Force, he says with a smile. Hal is shocked. He thought that the General was going to turn down his return. But the General smiles. I've been popped in the jaw twice in the last 15 years, Jordan. Some knuckles have a certain ring to it. He tells him, and the two shake hands. Welcome back, Captain. That night, Hal Jordan stands on his balcony, looking out over the darkness that is Coast City. And he looks down on the streets below, seeing his brother's car driving along full of his wife and kids. Hal smiles, quickly transforming, flying over to them as the Green Lantern, letting them know that they are safe. 
Meanwhile, in the darkness of space in an unknown sector that is the home of the Manhunter artificial planet, the Manhunter has now warned the Grand Master of the Corps' return, but the Grand Master is unconcerned. Let them. I need the rings back online. Then nothing can escape us. Not even Hal Jordan. The Grand Master tells his androids looking at the remains of several Green Lanterns. And there you have it, the first story in Green Lantern No Fear, a volume that does contain two full stories of Green Lantern adventures. This is all setting up what journey Hal Jordan's going to go on, and I hope you guys enjoy it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell, and I'll see you next time right here at the Comic Storian channel.